Hello and today's workshop is going to be, um, I'm afraid, some more trees. Um, I think living in Durham and only being able to go out from the house, um, I do a lot of walking down the riverbanks and what I've been doing is you get to the riverbank and you look up and you're looking at all the trees and how they come in and meet above your head. And the other day I saw these gorgeous little wagtail birds popping from branch to branch and as they leap and land their little tails go and I just thought they were lovely so that's what I've um, been painting in my head this morning so that's what I thought I'd paint with you guys this afternoon. Um, it kind of builds on the owl and moon painting because we're using some of the, some of the same techniques um, but some different ones as well. So this Oh, bit the right way around. This is the finished painting. Um, I've got a dark centre to my sky just off on my third and again I've got a channel of light in the main section of birds running up this side. Um, you'll notice this is a square piece of paper and because what I was wanting was all this feeling of the trees coming in, I've got my trees coming from all sides of my page. Um, Dominic took one look and said, is that a lockdown painting? Um, maybe suggesting that I'm perhaps trapped or maybe I'm wanting to be a bird and escape, I'm not sure. So what we do is start with a big square sheet of paper, whatever size you like, and we're going to need to get this really wet. So lots of water covering the whole piece of paper. Um, doesn't really matter what direction you put the water on, we're just going to get the whole lot wet, really wet. Um, I'm using Saunders 300 because it um, absorbs the water really well. Um, you need to make sure that it gets wet enough that the whole lot stays wet whilst you add paint. It all has to be wet while we put the paint on and until we're ready for the clink gun. Right, so that's a lovely wet piece of paper. And into that, I'm going to start with some French ultramarine. And there's my centre of French ultramarine. Put that in first. And then, I'm going to switch to my cerulean blue and start putting some of that in on the edge. It's just two blues. The cerulean blue, which is this sort of greeny, light blue. Right way around. You can see I'm making really quite a rich puddle of paint lots and lots of paint. It's not often I say don't worry about how you put it on, but for this it's going to be the cling film that gives direction to this painting. So this stage really doesn't matter how you put the paint on, so long as it's wet and it's quite rich. So I'm wanting quite a lot of pigment. Now, what I'm going to do with the um, cling film is I'm going to put it on from the outside in. So it's a bit like a spider's web. So I've got lots that are already the right length. And I'm pulling it that way so that the ridges go from the outside in. Because it's going to be that that gives direction to this piece. One. And then just work your way round 
making sure the ridges go from the outside to the inside. If you need to move, use your fingers to scrunch the paper up all the way around. Stretch it so that you get loads of nice stripes. Come on here. I think I've got about 10 pieces of cling film here. But really, it's as many as you need to get all the way around. So they're all going to the centre, which is this blue spot. Not quite the centre, just off centre. Right, and now I'm going to press down. What you should find is that you've got these channels of um, ridge, cling film ridges that stretch from the outside to the inside. And I'm going to use those to feed some brown paint and some black paint in. So the two colours I'm using are French, um, are, God I need you guys again, are um, burnt sienna for my brown, um, which mixes very nicely with the blues to make a sort of a soft grey as well. And I'm using the Payne's Grey. For this you want um, a medium to the brush, that'll do. It's a size 16 and it's got quite reasonably firm bristles so that I can get lots of nice rich colour. Then I'm going to lift the edge of the cling film and I'm going to wipe paint off from under the cling film and you can see straight away that it's travelling up the veins of the cling film. If your paper is very wet it's going to spread a lot so it might be worth, if you can see underneath and you can see it spreading out everywhere just give it a few minutes to dry, maybe another 10 minutes to dry. Um, let's go in this one. <laughs> so again, to wipe your brush and let it find those veins and those gaps. So I'm feeding brown in first and then I can feed a little bit of grey. You can see it tracking along. This is quite exciting, but you don't always know what's going to happen. Possibly worth doing two um, and seeing two at the same time, and then you can choose which one you carry on with. Uh, you never can be sure what's going to happen. So I'm just going to keep turning this round and adding burnt sienna. Burnt sienna going in there. even add it to the edge. If you've got space where the two pieces of cling film meet, you can feed it up the edge of that. Always from the outside in. There we go. Look at that, I was travelling the wrong way. That's quite wet, so I'm wanting to leave that a little bit. Into this one. Nice wet paint. Tracking instantly. Along the veins. Lovely. And then turn it around again. That's two sides done, or started. Again. So I'm putting the brown in first every time because that's the paler of the two colours. working my way around just checking that it's all right and 
I'm going to turn it around, do the last side. Actually, I'm getting dark in here, so I'm going to make some dark. So I'm able to tip this so that gravity helps the water track into the centre. I'm not worried about it reaching the centre because obviously the centre is where um, the branches finish and this, you get to see more of the sky. So the fact it doesn't travel all the way to the centre doesn't matter. The indigo starting and maybe put some grey in as well. Have a little look and check you don't think you need any more adding. And then really this needs to be left to dry. So don't touch it, it's going to take quite a long time to dry. You're probably going to want to leave it for three or four hours. Um, I'm going to show you a video of the birds that I was looking at and I'm just going to show you a few ways to draw them. So whilst you're waiting for your painting to dry, you've got plenty of time to practice drawing some birds. Um, and what I found is that when I looked at the close-ups, we've got this very quite straightforward shape. Got the body through to the tail, the head with a beak, and then we've got their lovely big wings. When they sit on a branch, we tend to get the lovely round body and then you get the tail that's quite distinctive, the little head and the beak. When we paint them, we're going to put the water on in this shape. There's a body, there's a tail, there's a head, there's the you can see as soon as I put the paint on, it's going to follow So it's worth just doing a little bit of practice before as your picture dries. The other thing that putting the water on first does is it gives it a, a slightly looser feel because the colour isn't such a block of colour, you get the lights and the darks in it at the same time. There we go. So have a little go at practising that. You've probably got about three hours. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, I've let that dry and it's been drying for quite a few hours because I've got it really quite wet and, um, and it's got quite a lot of cling film on it. So when you think it's dry, peel off the cling film and what we should have is a lovely range of patterns and textures all over this. Um, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for um, some dark in the centre, well sort of slightly off centre, that's the middle of my sky and then I've got the pale sky around the edge. The marks you get with the um, dark browns and the black that you fed in underneath the cling film will vary. It's 
it's um, it's a bit of a dark art, so it's a bit of good luck, um, but hopefully you'll have some nice patterns coming down. The next thing I'm going to do is I wanted to put the wagtails on, and I'm going to put those in. They're almost just silhouettes. Um, I'll, I'll I'll, I'll include um, some of the photographs that I took, but also if you Google wagtail silhouette, you'll get some good images. Um, so I'm going to put those in on this side. So I'm going to start by wetting the outline of my bird. And these little birds were flying all over. It was lovely. They were just um, flitting in and out of the trees as I stood and watched. So here goes the first one going in, some black in. And it, because I put water on the outline, the water should take that pigment to where it needs to be. Out along its wing, out along its wing. There we go. And there's one little bird. And his little beak. And then I'm going to do the same for the next one. Again, put the water on first. This one's sitting on a branch, just perched. And again, it's got that long, lovely tail. There we go. A little bit of black, it goes in. Follow the water around. And then I'm taking my little brush and looking at its little beak. And the next one. And I've got one up here in the sky. In goes its body. Wings. And then the colour. And this time I'm adding a little bit of the blue to the grey. Just to change it a bit. Long to its tail. So I've got three little birds there, and then got one down here. Water in first into the wings. Now put some colour on. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the trees and um, I'll do this quite quickly for you so that you're not watching me draw a hundred of trees. So what do we do? Let's start. Start with the one that it's sitting on. So in this bit I'm just pulling the trees up from the outside and I'm working around the edge of the page pulling my trees from the outside where they're wide um, into like the narrower trunks as they get towards the centre. Um, so just keep moving around your page, adding trees as you go. Um, I'm using the French, um, I'm using the brown and the grey. Um, the brown will make them look like they're more in the background and the Payne's grey will bring them more into the foreground. So just keep working your way around, pulling it in. I sort of have this area at the bottom where it looks like there's some sort of background trees so I'm putting those in brown and then it just needs one more bird. I 
think it just needs a little more texture, so I'm going to use a toothbrush to spray just some very fine little speckles which are going to look a bit like leaves, twigs, without me actually having to paint them all on. So this is brown that's going in. Just round where the tops of the trees would be. Obviously that's a little hard to tell because we've got lots of trees going around in a circle, but Better. And here we have the finished painting. Um, if I zoom in a bit, you'll be able to see all that lovely crinkly texture that we got with the cling film um, and all the speckles from the toothbrush. And then we've got our birds flying through the nice, clear, calm bit of the sky and then back out to all the trees. Um, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed painting along with me and um, I will hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.